Please don't skip ahead yet. Hi, this is your friendly neighborhood 80 slasher librarian, Josh LaRue. Just need a moment of your time. A lot of people don't know, but we're not able to monetize the channel here on YouTube due to the fact that the copyright holders of the books I narrate, the movies we rip, they get the ad revenue, and also being a partner on YouTube involves a lot of rules and censorship, and to do so would make it where a lot of the content, the audiobooks, the riffs, would have to be heavily censored or deleted completely. So we depend on amazing slashaholics like you to help fund the channel and keep it going and growing for years to come. And there's several fun ways to do that. You could join our Patreon right up there. And as a patron, you can join for as low as like $2, $5, $10 a month, on up as high as you want, and enjoy a lot of cool gifts like free ebooks, early access, exclusive content, even voicing characters and audiobooks here on the channel. You could also go to our PayPal and use the QR code right there. And uh, you can donate directly to the channel. We see all donations and we appreciate all of them. If you don't want to use the QR code or don't know how, you can use our PayPal email address, which will be in the description below and the pinned comment, as well as our Cash App uh, donation username. And a fun way to help the channel is through our Cameo right down there. Uh, on Cameo, you can ask for a birthday video, anniversary video. You can ask us to sing a song or something or ask us questions. And you can get a video from me, Alex, Sean, Master Evil, Mother Evil, the Rodeo Clown, any character from any show on the channel, or any character that I've voiced in the audiobooks. It's a fun way to help the channel. It's only $10 a video, and we'll have a lot of fun doing that. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy tonight's content. Be excellent to each other. Please consider helping the channel. And always remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Thank you. Good evening, and welcome to episode number seven of Slash Tracks Reviews. Uh, this is a very special kind of out of nowhere episode, and it's not in sequence, and we kind of just wanted to do something fun. So here's a surprise episode, number number seven, that Josh pointed out <laughs> in the Slash Tracks Reviews series is Friday the 13th, part seven, The New Blood. Yeah, Josh, all... are you psyched? Yeah, because, uh, you know, I was prepared for New Nightmare. But that's my favorite, so I'm kind of glad it's not checked off the list yet. Uh, but yeah, so we decided to change things up for this episode. We'll still get back to the Freddy franchise, but uh, I honestly thought when Alex reached out and said, hey, let's review uh, New Blood, that he picked that Jason movie because it was, in fact, part seven for the seventh episode of Slash Tracks Reviews. Complete happy accident, right? Yeah, you gave me too much uh, credit there. I can't remember what we did in a previous show or what franchise or series we were doing, but somebody was like, oh, I think I know what it was. We were doing uh, Slash Tracks. Like, every movie just happened to be number three, but at the start <laughs> of it, we're like, that wasn't the the plan. Scream 3 just happened to be the movie we were, like, starting the season with. So you were like, Alex, we should just do third movies and franchises yeah. like for this series or for this you know season or whatever does that mean for season four the fans might be seeing i don't know bride of chucky carnosaur four raptor and uh ghoulies four yeah i think so because we actually did plan that out in advance we planned <laughs> that one in advance that season three was a happy accident yeah, yeah um josh what are your so do you remember the first time you saw new blood let's see the the one that I really harken back to is part six. But the first time I saw New Blood, I think, was on a USA uh, Friday the 13th marathon. I okay. think I was probably like seven or eight years old. 
and uh, my parents were asleep. My sisters were watching it, and I snuck in and watched it. And I used to think it was so cool uh, how Jason was getting his butt kicked by a chick with powers. You know, it's yeah. So, uh, so, as an adult, it's so different, though. You know, compared to the rest of the uh, movies. But uh, what was your first experience? I remember going to. I think it was either in my town. The local video store was called. I think it was either all that video or video vendors. And if any of you slashaholics are from my area, uh, maybe you can help us out in the comments below. Um, but I remember this particular video store over by the Albertsons mm -hmm. uh, in my hometown of North Bend had like a coming attractions uh, posters that they put in like little bulb lights, like coming soon or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And I remember seeing this movie poster right behind me, uh, you know, bright in bright lights, you know, being advertised out front. Yeah. And I think I was probably six or seven. Uh, cause the movie came out in 88. So that would put me and you around four and five years old. And I just remember seeing the poster and I'm like, what is that? I would really like to see that. What, what is that? And, uh, we rented it and I don't know if it was cause I was a little kid and I have member berries now. Cause <laughs> if you go back and you see this movie, uh, there's a lot of flaws. There's a lot of stuff that's been edited, like from the kills and everything. They're not as uh, good as they were supposed to be originally. Um, but for some reason, I just really enjoyed this movie. I like to see Jason have somebody that uh, was his equal match. Um, and it was just kind of a different take on a friend. I mean, how many times we've said this before, how many times can uh, you go to Camp Crystal Lake and have Jason just insert uh, counselor <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, and F, and he just slaughters them all. It's like, it's the same movie basically over and over again. Exactly. I, I love the ones that switch it up. You know, nine and ten are are two of my favorites. They're at the, you're actually at the top of my list. Mine too. They're different, and and they had to be different for a reason. And you even said, "You're like Alex. People get pissed off because they they switch the formula, and people get pissed off because they stay to the formula." Exactly. So it's like, right. what do you want? You got to do something different. I mean, at movie ten, what other series? <laughs> other than like Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever has like could even say that it like realistically like, Hey Josh, we are going to put out a number 10 or 11 of this movie franchise. Like other than fast, fast and the furious, like who has the balls to even do that? Saw, but it's a horror movie. Um, it is a horror movie. Oh. Yeah. What genre beside I'm trying to think. None. Other fast genre and the besides that. Yeah. Star Wars. But that's, you know, yeah, totally different. And the new star, let's not even get into the new star Wars no. films because like critically panned let's redo um, them they need to redo those just i'll be i'm fine with that hey side note before we get into the meat and potatoes of new blood i saw the snl skit where the guy who plays kylo ren um <laughs> he's like it, he's like he's pretending that he's not kylo ren or something undercover and boss people, yeah undercover boss and he's like well newsflash i am kylo ren and then they're like yeah we know yeah the whole <laughs> time they knew <laughs> Yeah, you like strangled with those guys with your mind earlier, uh, earlier in the day. And that one girl that was really always wanted to be a pilot, you know, and he brings her like a uh, flight suit like his. And she goes, yeah. oh, I was kind of hoping for one like Luke Skywalker. <laughs> oh, no. He's like, yeah. <laughs> dude, by the way, um, this show is dangerous. You see that hedge clipper thing he's got running right there? Yeah. When I sat down, this happened. Like, oh no, yeah, man, that's it's dangerous. You know, I'm gonna need some uh, work workers comp or something for losing my hair, man. I was growing that oh, stuff Jason. back out. Jason, just a little bit off the top, not the whole, not the whole spiel there, bud. He got a little heavy handed, huh? Yeah, I ducked. So, <laughs> hey, by the way, I know we're gonna talk about his kills later in the episode, but where the hell did he get a tree trimmer? Uh, in the middle of the woods like was that a tina's the girl with telekinetic powers was that in her family shed or something well he was actually uh considering turning his little shack into the offices for his new landscaping company Voorhees landscaping okay but uh these people showed up pissed him off so you know he had to clear the area it's amazing that he even knows how to use a tree trimmer and also in Friday the 13th part two, he, he drives a car or he takes a taxi cab. Have we decided what he did in that one? The, uh, the, the book, 
uh, the novelization of, of the second movie says, I'm pretty sure it says he walked okay. all the way. Uh, or With took a, a bus on his head or something. I think he might have took a bus. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to re-listen or reread it. But it was. Gets I on think, the bus. I think he walked. Gets on the bus with a sack on his head, and he like has no money for the bus fare. He's got a bus uh, pass his mommy gave him. <laughs> it's not expired from the fifties no. when he was. Wow. She used Mrs. Voorhees used the Necronomicon to uh, make the bus pass uh, never it never expires. How about that? It's yeah. always good. So I don't know where we're starting at on the review, yeah. but I will say, even though this movie is very low on my list of favorite Jason movies, mm -hmm. it's still above part one, still above part two, still above part three and part eight, but it's, you know, it's down there. Um, I got to say, Kane Hodder, his first foray into uh, being Jason and, yeah. in my opinion, the best look for Jason out of the entire series. I think the most terrifying. I think hands down, John Carl Beekler, the man who directed this film. Uh and let's just get into it. That's a perfect you started it out perfectly. Let's do that. Okay. So the director of this film is John Carl Beekler. Uh slash holics, you probably know him from uh he directed Ghoulies Go to College. <laughs> uh and if you haven't seen Josh and I's uh excellent riff on that. You can check it out in the archives on the channel. I believe it's Slash Track Season 1, right? Uh, Part 3, yeah, I think that's still uh, Season 1 or 2, yeah. No, it's okay. Season, season uh, yeah, Season 1, but it might also pop up live every now and then, too, so keep an eye out for that. Yeah, keep an eye, keep an eye out on the Slash Tracks Network for Ghoulies Go to College, where we riff it. Uh, John Carl Beekler also directed Cellar Dweller, <laughs> and he also uh, directed Troll, so the first, first Troll. Uh, I did not know that. Um, so a couple decent movies under his belt. Uh, this one, New Blood and Troll. Uh, he did the makeup effects. So he was a he was like a big time makeup artist, like practical effects. Yeah. He was on Dream Master. Uh, he did Freddy, you know, for part four. I think he did the Soul of Chests. Uh, he did some other stuff, probably the Soul Pizza. The Chest um, of Souls. Yeah, Chest of Soul, Soul of Chests. <laughs> Continue. <Soul, that> <laughs> <laughs> um he did makeup effects on prison which is ironically where he found kane hotter uh so he was doing the makeup effects uh for prison and kane hotter was doing a character on that movie and allegedly or it actually happened because they both speak to it apparently there was a scene where kane hotter was playing somebody and th the person was supposed to have like maggots like near their mouth or like fake maggots coming out of his mouth or something. And uh, Kane Hodder was like, hey, how about we just put real maggots in my mouth? I'll totally do it. Go and Kane. then John, yeah. So John Carl Beekler's like, okay, this guy's like really dedicated to like this art. And it kind of left an impression on him. So when he ended up casting uh, Jason for this film, The New Blood, he remembered how dedicated Kane was to, to the, his work on prison. And uh, John also uh, did makeup effect for Halloween 4 and Hatchet. So he's worked on almost every big franchise except for like Leprechaun or Hellraiser. I don't think he worked on either one of those, but he's been Freddy, did Jason. this guy? Michael. Did he work on any of these? I don't think he did, no. But our friend Adam Marcus did. Yes, he did. Yeah. We'll be and chatting with our... Adam again, by the way, when his documentary comes out. So that's going to be fun. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we spoke to him about that. Yeah. Um. Hey, total offshoot. When are we talking to Mark Patton? Do you know? Uh, Sometime later this month. I've got to reach out to him and set that up. So. Okay. Um. So, yeah, John Carl Beakley directed it. He's got a lot of experience in makeup, uh, directed some horror movies you might be familiar with, discovered Kane Hodder on prison cast Kane Hodder as Jason, right? So this is Kane Hodder's first uh, segue or first appearance as uh, Jason Voorhees in the series, which led to how many appearances? Eight, nine, and ten. Yep. So he's in four Friday the 13th movies as Jason. In a row. Famously yep. screwed over uh, to play Jason in Freddy vs. Jason. Was actually oh. given a script, Josh, to play yep. Jason in that movie. What are your That's pretty interesting that? with no lines. <laughs> I, I, well, yeah, you got to get into character here. Uh, they, ha they had to make sure he, uh, he could run a, uh, 
weed whacker, you know? So you had to be prepared <laughs> well, for that. <laughs> No, Freddy versus Jason, they gave him a script, remember? Oh, and oh then, I thought you were talking about this one. I'm sorry. No, the new, bl I'm sure at this point they could have said he could have, you're running a weed whacker, you're running a freaking sawzall. He would have did anything to get this part. Yeah. But yeah, they gave Ironically, him a script. He worked on trying to get that movie made for years. For Freddy years. Versus Jason. Championed well, it. Yeah. What are your, I know we've talked about it before, but what's your true feelings about that? Do you think Kane should have been allowed to play Jason in Freddy versus Jason? Oh, yes. And I'm sure when we review that movie, uh, we're going to have a lot to say about it. Uh, but yeah, he definitely should have. Uh, in fact, that's the next movie we're riffing <laughs> on Slash Tracks, isn't it? Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, it's the season finale of Slash Tracks. Yeah, yeah Freddy versus uh, Jason. I'm sure that's going to come up a few times. But yeah, I'll save my thoughts. I'm very angry about it. And I think there was some uh, lying going on on somebody's part. Uh, and I think the part was stole from him. So yeah, you, you think Ronnie, you misled uh, Kane, or do you think? Because Ronnie, you always says, "Oh, that wasn't my decision. I that was New Lines." No, it wasn't. And every time I hear other interviews, it's like, "No, Ronnie, you definitely wanted somebody that was uh, physically way bigger than Robert." They put they put lifts on on Robert. They could have put lifts on Kane. You know, filmed it a certain way. It's just ridiculous. We're gonna. I don't understand. We're gonna like go through like an hour of that when we do that movie, but yeah, okay. very, yeah. So, very, very irritating. Newsflash: uh, We're both annoyed with that still to this day. It's like twenty-two years later, and we're still pissed. Personal um, vendetta. <laughs> yeah, we're both upset. Every time I see Ken as oh he was in Freddy versus Jason, I just think of him and Jason takes Manhattan, where Kane takes him and tosses him into that fucking mirror uh, when he was like the short order cook in New York. Yes, <clears throat> that's what Ken Krasinger is doing um so can you know kane is jason then we have lar park lincoln the the sexy blonde she's the carrie ripoff the stephen king's carrie ripoff she's got the telekinetic powers uh we got a guy named kevin blair he's nick he's her love interest and he always looked like a bootleg clark kent to me <laughs> yeah, uh he was like that. a cheap knockoff version of superman um susan blue plays Tina's mom, Mrs. Shepard. And I always kind of thought that her voice sounded familiar. And it's because it did, Josh. She she did voices for almost every 80s cartoon we ever watched. <laughs> uh, Jim, Transformers. Oh, uh, Jim was Duck the first Tales. one on my mind. And it's the first one you said. That is crazy. <laughs> Jim. Yeah. Holy but I'm cow. just saying like 30, 40 different cartoons from the 80s that we watched, that we all watched as kids. Uh, she did a lot of the voices for it. Uh, then, of course, we've got Terry Kaiser as Dr. Cruz. So he's Tina's shrink who's like allegedly taking her back to this cabin of whores at <laughs> Crystal Lake to like help her get over the grief that she feels because she thinks she killed her father with her telekinetic powers um so terry cruz or dr cruz is actually <laughs> terry cruz <laughs> terry cruz <laughs> terry cruz dr cruz uh is actually the guy who was uh bernie lomax at a weekend at bernie's so he actually had to have some lines in this film so <laughs> that's a change not just acting with his body the entire time uh girl named susan jennifer sullivan played melissa she's like the stereotypical stuck-up blonde bitch you got Elizabeth Catan as Robin. She's a hot redhead. You got Jen, or excuse me, John Renfield as David. He's a stoner. Jeff, uh, Jeff Bennett as Eddie. He's the sci-fi nerd, uh, which I think he's kind of like the Crispin Glover ripoff. <laughs> yeah. Um, me, he was all in my computer. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Am I correct? <laughs> yeah and also the guy who played eddie the crispin glover ripoff he was in an episode of freddy's nightmares so and slash alex if you have uh any access to that check him out then you've got diana barrows who plays maddie she's the girl with glasses nerd type like she looks like the girl and um she's all that before she, she got like paint on her overalls like she's the girl and a who's... ponytail Ugh. yeah the pony a ponytail she's gonna have a transformation later because she wants to bang David, the stoner, where they don't really build that story. But Robin, her friend, is banging David. She reminded um, me of the girl in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 
five, I think, or was it four, where she... Uh, four, the girl who knows trigonometry or calculus. Yeah, she gets as, like, she dies from her asthma yeah. or whatever, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we all, <laughs> and then we have Craig Thomas as Ben, and we have Diane Almeida as Kate. Now, these are the two, this is the couple that was killed in the van, okay? And I see them in this, and I'm like, did were they cast just because they look like <laughs> two people that were on the Cosby show at the time? Because the Cosby show was really huge. It was probably yeah. like the number one show. They're like, let's just take two Huxtable kids, two Cosby kids, and have Jason yeah. slaughter them in a van. Maybe, one of them looks yeah. like Elvin. Do you remember that show at all? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. He looks, yeah. he looks identical to Denise's husband on the Cosby show. Uh so you might you could have had Elvin out there get slaughtered by Jason. I just always <laughs> ever since I was a kid, I was like, oh, that looks like the guy from the Cosby Show. So uh, at this then you've point, got... at this point though, wouldn't the movie <laughs> have we got to the point in the Friday the Thirteenth series at this point where it's like in the nineties? You know, like yeah, yes, it would actually. <laughs> I think we've I think we've tried to do Jason math in the past. Yeah, <laughs> this movie came out in eighty eight, but if we're going by continuity. Of an actual timeline, this movie would be like 2000. Yeah, and part um, eight is even further up. <laughs> yeah, like 2000. Like they should have cell phones and stuff, and uh, GPS, and like MySpace. Um. Oh, so what else do we got here? Heidi Kozak plays Sandra. She's like a preppy hot blonde, and she's also in that movie Society, where the guy is like they have like a sex rich orgy party and like the guy's head is coming out of that guy's ass oh, you know yeah, what i'm talking yeah, about yeah yeah, yeah so yeah. she's in that movie and then we've got a guy named larry cox who plays russell and he is like the preppy brooks brother investor guy whose cabins his family's cabin is the place that they're at okay okay so this is the cast okay and the, when i'm reading this cast down in the, in the nightmare on elm street movie reviews it was kind of easier to do a deep dive into the characters because they kind of fleshed them out a little bit more. There was less of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. By part seven, uh, Friday the 13th and New Blood, we're not really going to be able to do that unless we <laughs> want this episode to be five hours long because my first thought is there's so many fucking characters for Jason to kill in this movie. Well, I will tell you this. It's funny you brought that up. Um, I just finished Halloween 5 on the channel, the novelization and uh, back on Halloween, or no, it was Friday the 13th of October, I think, I did a preview of book number 69, which I'm about to continue. I put out the prologue of Landon Turner's Friday the 13th 7, the New Blood novelization. And uh, as he was writing this, I was like touching base with him. And he was having a hard time with the novelization because he said this is the first movie that uh, he had written for where they just really didn't give a shit about the characters yeah you know, there was there wasn't a whole lot for him to grab onto and add to and expand um <clears throat> and i think that's why after writing that one he's like he's not going to do a part eight and if he does it's going to be a while down the road uh somebody else is actually doing a jason goes to hell novelization that i'm actually collabing with on writing um are you serious really yeah yeah some of my story ideas are going to make it into it um but yeah, Landon Turner's Friday the 13th 7. I'm going to start narrating that again soon. He had the same issue, like trying to find anything with these characters to flesh out, you know, in yeah. backstories and stuff. So I, I completely agree. We could sit here and like contemplate and make up stuff, I guess, for the characters, but there's really not much there. They're very just g generic, vanilla carbon copies of other characters from other horror movies, just cutouts. Like, yeah. Yeah, they don't Cookie have cutters. much going on. So, Josh, uh, speaking of there being way too many characters in this film and they're all just <laughs> cookie cutter cannon fodder for Jason. Yeah, uh, I have a second page uh, I just turned to in the rundown and we have four more characters that we got to talk about. Real quick. Is Jason or the dad one of them? No, we talked about Jason. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know the dad's not. I don't have to. So that'd be five. OK, um, so we've got William Butler as Michael. He's the one who it's his birthday party that they're they're going to. So it's his surprise birthday party. And then his girlfriend, the hot, she's like a hot strawberry blonde or redhead or something. Stacy yeah. Stacy Gleason. She plays Jane. 
Uh, they're both horribly slaughtered in the woods after the car breaks down. And uh, he's like, well, we should just stay here because the cars broke down. You know, we'll, we'll go back to the car in the morning or something. And she's like, no, you, we can't do that. Cause uh, I've got a surprise party planned for you. And he's like all excited. Um, and then he's murdered like literally three minutes later. <laughs> um, Happy birthday. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I feel bad about that. And I, every time someone gets killed on their birthday in a horror movie, I just envision the tombstone saying like the day they were born and the day they died as the same day. That's that. Yeah. That's kind of hard not to think that'd be a great tombstone. Yeah. yeah. That's just, that's interesting. Um, and I always felt bad for him. Cause it's like, man, he's going to go to a birthday. He's going to like have a good time. And now Jason's just going to absolutely slaughter him and his hot girlfriend. Uh, Deborah Kessler or yeah. Kessler played Judy. Now Judy is a nobody, nothing. And so was her boyfriend, Michael Schroeder. Okay. They were thrown in to the film just as more people to die. So they just added more kills basically. Yeah. But Judy, a throwaway character that was added for no reason, she's basically um, like in uh, Jason Lives when the yuppie couple gets killed on the moped. Like they're basically just thrown in to be murdered. Judy is famous because she's the first one to ever be killed in a sleeping bag. So she's killed by Jason uh, in the sleeping bag. And Josh, I think you should hit the clip of uh, Jason killing her in the sleeping bag. Let's do it. I got something to say afterwards. That was my chair. Your asshole. <laughs> okay, you big hunk of a man, come and get me. Dan? Dan, what are you doing? So sleeping bag kill was supposed to be way more brutal than that. And uh, that's why in Jason X, we got, you know, with him like yeah. slamming them into each other and over and over again. Uh, it was kind of a uh, in, inside joke about how that's nothing, you know, and they cut it out of the movie. And all we get is like one whack against the tree. You yeah. know, it, 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 it's such an insane over overkill kill. I don't even understand why they made such a big deal about it. You know, I would love to see now that we're in the, you know, 2020s. All this footage they had that got cut. I would love to see the movies re put out in theaters without all the stuff that was cut out. You know, they've got to have a way of doing that. That would be great to see the um, way it's supposed to be. If you could actually see like the the unedited kills from this movie in particular, because John Carl Beekler was the master of CGI, or excuse me, not CGI, prosthetics and practical yeah. effects. Um, I think it'd be a completely different film. I think it would be remembered better and more loved by the fan base. But the MPAA just fucking hated Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. This film was almost an X rating. Um, they just he had to keep sending it back and sending it back and sending it back and kept editing and editing and getting cut and cut to the point where John Carl Beekler said that uh, they raped his movie. Uh, um, it was no longer the vision he had, which is unfortunate. But what I think, uh, piggybacking on what you just said, I don't think that they can find any of that actual uh, footage, oh, Josh, yeah. because yeah. back in the old days, these movies were so... Um, yeah like it's right. like disposable like that that film that film that they used i think they just caught like they just film over top of it right i think they used it for something else probably mpaa man that's like movie pricks assholic assholes i don't know i'm trying to think of something bad for their for what it stands for movie yeah. pricks astonishing assholes yeah they ruined so many movies man 
they did the same thing with dream child we talked about that in a previous episode um probably didn't do it on freddy's dead because freddy's dead didn't really have any horrific kills they're like hey we need less you need to drop less pins when carlos has the super hearing aid in his ear the horrific kill in freddy's dead was the death of a franchise oh my yeah and the mpaa is like we're okay with this one yeah you can kill freddy no problem (laughs) uh so we went through the cast of characters this movie josh was released on may 13th 1988 the production budget was 2.8 million dollars uh the film ended up grossing 19.2 million dollars at the box office so it what is that six nine twelve it made like seven times its budget so Mm -hmm. it was highly successful um i believe that it was released on actual friday the 13th what was the so, budget May one more 13th, time? Two point eight million. Hell yeah! So, did you see where this stands as far as the highest grossing uh, Jason movies? I didn't. I I know for a fact that Freddy vs Jason was the highest grossing film until the remake came out in two or the you know the two thousand nine reboot. I thought part I believe... one, uh, as far as budget to box office over time, because it was I don't know they had like a five hundred thousand dollar budget. I'm just talking about like gross, like okay. total money that okay. you're gotcha. But you're gotcha. you're probably correct on that because uh the first Friday the thirteenth was just a Halloween ripoff. Yeah. Uh that they made for nothing. Uh, you know, they killed an actual snake for that son of a bitch. Uh where they cut the snake in half. Do you remember that scene? Yeah. yeah. Like in the bunk. Yeah, they killed that snake for real. But uh so that snake died for that movie. Oh, um sneaky snake. Probably the highest grossing budget to to you know box office was the first one. But this movie, kind of right in the middle of the franchise, so it's not the worst, it's not the best as far as, like, financial return. Um, the the movie previous to this, uh, Jason Lives, made $19.5 million in 1986. And then Jason Takes Manhattan made $14.3 million. But the problem with Jason Takes Manhattan was the movie was actually made for $5.5 million. Yeah, yeah. So the budget was two times higher made about 5 million less. It was 1989. It was the end of the eighties. The slasher craze was kind of going away. And uh, they said takes Manhattan and he didn't take Manhattan. Word of mouth no. probably helped kill that movie. Yeah. I would say instead of taking Manhattan, I'd say that he like, uh, took a boat to Vancouver. Know. Yeah. Well, took a boat to Vancouver, but maybe like, uh, took a red eye to Manhattan and had a layover left. there for an hour. <laughs> Yeah, he, like, slept in the airport, like, on the ground with his duffel bag under his head uh, and then immediately got on another plane and left to go to Vancouver. There you Uh, go. All these fan films getting made. Somebody out there with the resources make an actual Jason Takes Manhattan. That is a challenge for all slasher fan film movie makers out there. Show us what could have been. That would be a really cool fan film, I think. But we have to have our friend of the channel, Tom Matthews, in it. He's got to come. He's got to. He's got to be on vacation to Manhattan. He's got to get away from Crystal Lake. He's finally never hiked alone. Three. Uh, Tommy is in Manhattan, and it's snowing again. Okay, it's snowing. Never in go the to Big Central Apple. Park alone. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't exercise. Don't exercise in Central Park alone. And it's Tommy. He he moves away, but Jason follows him ultimately. While drinking your juice um, in Crystal Lake, there you go. Yeah, yeah. While drinking your Chris, while drinking your juice in Crystal Lake in the hood, there you with go. Leprechaun. <laughs> uh, so this, yeah. So we talked about this before. This was the introduction of Kane Hodder as Jason. So a huge deal for the franchise. Yes. Uh, we talked about how the movie was edited to death. MPAA just absolutely screwed John Carl Beekler of his uh, vision. Screwed the fans out of seeing like an amazing product. Um. There are some really rough cuts of some of the actual kills before they were edited available. And they are really good. Like there's the scene where the kid who looks like Elvin from the Cosby show, he's in the van and he thinks the Michael finally showed up. So he's like, Hey Michael, it's your birthday. I'm going to go out and I'm having sex with my girlfriend right now, but instead (laughs) I'm going to come out here with a party blower uh, to find you for some reason. Yeah. So he gets out of the van and Jason grabs him and starts to like crush his head. Yeah. In the uncut version, you can see his eyeballs like popping out. His face is getting crushed like a can. Blood is going everywhere. 
it looks amazing yeah. in the uncut or in the cut version in the movie it's you barely see anything you 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 hear stuff basically you hear him kind of struggling and ultimately he dies but the uncut version that is available you can see it it's amazing dude it's worth checking out folks check it out yeah check it out it um so in this film we're going to talk about some of the things in this film real quick uh kane hotter apparently set a record uh he had a 40 second on camera burn stunt and knowing his history that's crazy you it's know ridiculous. he he almost died uh from a burn when he was starting to get into stunts i mean if you guys have seen that uh what is it to hell and back yep. his documentary mm-hmm. yeah kane hotter was severely burnt over most of his body i mean it was traumatic and for him to even go back to to burn stunts again just but shows all- what kind of a human being he is to be, be honest with you fearless um i don't know that i would ever i mean i don't know that i would ever go back to the live burn stunts no i don't think i could i don't think i could especially in all that costume and you know the makeup and stuff if he had it on under that mask at the time um yeah because in that scene he does okay this movie since we're going to talk about the burn leading up to the burn and folks, we know that everybody watching this has seen this movie a hundred times. We're not going to break it down scene by scene. We might even leave parts out, you know, that some people think are big. Uh, just, we're just going to have just a fun discussion about it. Um, timber, the timber scene on the stairs is one of the funniest moments I've ever seen with Jason. Like to fall through the stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. You mean like when he's being choked out by the light socket or whatever and he he just 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 falls back and lands and just this way it's like timber and just falls through the oh you're um yeah where he just kind of like like almost like a trust fall (laughs) yeah yeah the the stairs didn't catch him he 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 yeah he doesn't trust under the stairs (laughs) trust fall to nobody um so yeah he set a record at the time 40 second burn on air i thought when you were talking about the trust fall that like you know how like all stuntmen when they're you can tell like when the scene's almost done they drop yeah yeah we talked about that yeah. on nightmare one yeah yeah you can see the guy you can see fat freddy drop to the <laughs> ground at the first nightmare in elm street uh i think it was one of the fat boys from the music video later oh, on for yeah. child yeah he that's how we got uh into the nightmare franchise to begin with one of the fat boys was the guy who did the on-screen burn in the first film it's yeah. true because it was talked about on the internet here. So it's got to be true. Yeah, we just, yeah, it totally unsubstantiated. Uh, we just made it up on the spot. It's, it happened. By the um, way, just so there's no confusion, because I know some people might be wondering, my camera is like over a foot above me and in front of me. So it's kind of pointing down at me. So if I'm not looking right at the camera, it looks like I'm either really stoned or I'm going to sleep while Alex is talking. But yeah. uh, my eyes are wide open, I promise. Um, Slash tracks reviews ASMR <laughs> with me, where I just talk about production notes <laughs> and little fun facts from the new book. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, as you're falling asleep, Slashaholics, remember that CJ Graham, who played Jason <laughs> in Jason Lives, wanted to reprise his role <laughs> as Jason but was ultimately turned away by John Carl Beekler. And if you look at the back of Jason's costume, <laughs> you can actually see the real spine of a human being. The makeup department went all out on this, got medical experts to make sure that every disc in the spine was accounted for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, dude. So apparently CJ Graham uh, expressed interest. He wanted to come back to the franchise and, uh, you know, reprise his role as Jason, but But, he had uh, in his mind. But but, No, hold on. But Kane Hodder said, you know, actually I played Jason in part six, but all he did was like one stunt in the movie. So they. they Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, CJ, CJ actually threw him through a diner window. uh, (laughs) Yeah. in that film no so yeah no cj graham apparently had this idea that he was going to like turn the jason character into his frankenstein like boris karloff did Mm -hmm. um 
which fun, which funny enough, uh, I think that CJ Graham did a great job with the Jason character and Jason lives. As a matter of fact, he's my second favorite Jason. Uh, my third favorite is from uh, the final chapter. Mm -hmm. I really like Ted White's uh, Jason in part four. Uh, but so if anybody else was going to play him other than Kane, I would have been fine with CJ playing him, but I'm really happy that Kane was ultimately chosen for the role, to be honest with you. Yes. Yes. Without Kane, I don't think Jason would be what it is now. I don't think the Jason video game would have been as good. He did mm -hmm. all the stunt, like all the, uh, cap, uh, screen capture for that, uh, for all the kills in the, in the game, everything. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think that passion, like passion for your work, passion for your life, passion for a job. I think that like Kane encapsul encapsulates all that. Like he literally, whatever job he's doing, he's all in. And I really admire that about him. Kane, um, I'll put it this way. Kane's the only Jason, I think, that, okay, whenever I narrated Freddy versus Jason, the novelization, it was mm -hmm. based on the original script. And the original script had Kane Hodder in mind. So okay. while I'm reading the book, narrating it, it mentions things like the way Jason is walking, the way he's breathing, you know, and yeah, it's all Kane stuff. It's Kane. You can tell just by reading it that when you, when you picture it, it's Kane. Uh, that's no other person who's played Jason. Can I say that about that? I could know just by reading what Jason's doing. I'd be like, Oh, that's Ted Jason or that's Roy Jason. So, yeah, came um, all the way for me. I was going to say one thing I accidentally skipped over when we were doing our ASMR uh, Friday the 13th uh, bit right there. So apparently at this point in time in the franchise, when they made this movie or when they were in pre-production, they really wanted to have Freddy versus Jason. So they were attempting to uh, partner up and collaborate with New Line Cinema. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't come up with a situation where it worked. Uh, New Line Cinema, Robert Shea, all the people over there were not going to uh, like license Freddie to another studio. They weren't going to loan him to Paramount. And Paramount wasn't going to loan Jason to New Line Cinema. But I think Paramount was the one really pushing for it. Um, at the time, though, <clears throat> excuse me, it really made no sense for Freddie or for New Line Cinema to even uh, participate in something like that because they were just coming off the Dream Master, which yeah. was at the time in 1988 was the biggest financial success of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. So they really had no reason to to try to do a gimmick at that point. Yeah. Uh, and they were only at part four. And by this point in the franchise for Friday the 13th, this is part seven. They're trying to breathe new blood into the franchise. <laughs> Pardon the pun. So they're like, man, if we can bring Freddy into this, uh, maybe we could make a lot, a shitload of money, you know, but it ultimately didn't work. So the reason we got this Carrie White ripoff was because they pivoted. So they're like, well, we like the idea of Jason versus somebody. So let's have Jason fight somebody that's his match. Mm -hmm. So we obviously don't have the rights to Carrie, but we could totally rip her off. And so they did. And they did. And... Damn it! I'm sorry. I keep uh, clearing my throat. Slash hogs. Um, not sorry. They did a good job. <laughs> they did a good job uh, with the ripoff. To be honest with you, because she she ultimately is his match. I mean, the, the, let's get into the plot. Let's get into the plot real quick. There's, oh, the plot. There's a plot. Yeah, Shit, we're, I should have. Yeah, uh, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're getting into the plot. I didn't study. For Tina. This. I'm sorry. It's multiple choice. Tina. <laughs> uh, Tina Shepard, I believe, is her name. Uh, she, when she was a little girl, apparently her mom and dad had this cabin at Crystal Lake. Okay. And her dad was an alcoholic. He used to hit her mom. Apparently one night he has an incident where he hits her mom. He's drinking. Uh, Tina goes outside, uh, gets on the lake in a boat, uh, runs away from the abuse. The dad comes out, tries to talk her out of uh, the boat, tries to get her back on shore. She has her first, like, uh, telekinetic situation because of the stress and the anger from what what's going on yeah and she uh, she crushes the dock um which actually josh let's hit the let's hit a clip real quick and show that where she accidentally kills her father let's do it tina don't please honey come back you hit mom again tina tina i hate you go away please baby i'm 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Go away! I hate you! I wish you were dead! So there's there's Tina accidentally killing her father with the you know with the doc. Um, years go by. Okay, her dad's dead. Apparently, he's still in the water. The police and fire department, everybody weren't able to retrieve the body. Apparently, because later on he shows up at the end of the film to and save her ass. Is muddy. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert: He shows up. He's not decayed or anything. Um, they never pulled his body out from underneath the dock. Apparently. Um, and yeah, and also apparently the gases and stuff that emit when a body decomposes didn't lift his body to the to the top of the lake. Why is it that she wasn't successful in raising him the first time she tried, but at the end of the movie she is successful? <laughs> like you know, because well, she already raised Jason, so yeah. the only other person to raise, I guess, would be uh, her dad. I guess there's a whole um, line of people just at the bottom of the lake waiting their turn. <laughs> yeah, her dad's down there waiting um so anyway years go by she she's having serious mental issues um and she's developed these telekinetic powers i guess whatever she can move stuff with her mind she can uh you know i that's pretty much all she can do is like break stuff with her mind move stuff with her mind yeah. um but it's a problem she's having issues she can't she doesn't really have any friends uh she can't she doesn't really have much of a life so her um, Bernie Lomax, uh, her doctor, uh, you know, weekend at Bernie's decides he's going to take her and have some trauma therapy, some exposure therapy. He's going to bring her back to the cabin all these years later, and he's going to cure her. But Slashaholics, he doesn't want to cure her. He wants to make money off of her because he's filming it. Yep. So he wants to get these telekinetic powers on camera so Bernie Lomax can make money off it. Write a book. Yep. Yeah. So he's going to write a book or do a documentary or whatever. Um, if there was social media, I'm sure you'd be live streaming, uh, <laughs> tweeting about it, uh, whatever. Uh, TikTok and Tina's powers, there'd be something. So, and to make oh. a long story short, uh, the whole plot of every Jason movie uh, ends up happening, especially part four's plot. <laughs> you know, uh, next yeah. door's a bunch of teens, just like in part four. Uh, where they're partying, just like in part none of them, are, <laughs> none of them are likable though in this one. <laughs> yeah, good point. Um, it's really confusing on why the boyfriend and girlfriend even date each other. You know, like you're such none an asshole, the, just constantly. <laughs> none of the couples Pick on their poor sense. nerdy friend girl. Yeah, it, so they're having the party next door. They're at the house. Tina decides she wants to try to be a kid or be a teenager or whatever because Nick, the hunky Superman lookalike guy from uh, The Hills Have Eyes Part 2, decides to uh, show up and he's like, hey, do you want to come over to my you know, cousin's birthday party or whatever and have a Sprite or whatever? And she's like, sure. <laughs> so she goes over there. She meets all the dipshits at the party. Um, kind of like, I, I think... Um, Jennifer Lynn Sullivan is that her name? Hold on one second. the The blonde bitch, the rich bitch, right? Yeah, and she's, yeah. uh, she starts somehow. She finds out that Tina's got mental problems, and uh, Tina gets upset after she makes fun of her at the party, and she uses Eddie as a prop, like uh, puts him in a straight jacket or something, and makes yeah. fun of Tina. Tina gets upset, breaks uh the girl's neck, the pearls, the not her neck, but breaks the the necklace on her. Yeah. You know, the pearl necklace or whatever. Great so effect. she runs back to her, she runs back to her house. And uh, then we kind of start seeing the beginnings of Jason because there's like a spike in the door, right? Isn't there a spike in the door? And it's from the vision she had because earlier yeah. in the movie, she yeah. had a vision of Nick's cousin who's coming up for his birth secret birthday party uh, being murdered. 
So it's the same spike that he was being killed with. Yeah, yeah. She, um, uh, for you know, because I, I doubt we're going to remember every single one of them. But that's yeah. a big plot point is certain visions she had start coming true. Yeah. Yeah. So not only can she like move stuff with her mind, she can like see the future or the past or something that before it happens. But so she goes and tells Bernie Lomax, uh, Dr. Cruz, like, hey, I found this spike. This was the same spike in my vision. He's like, no, that's not possible. Uh, you're just you're stressed and you're making shit up. I, I knew you shouldn't have went over and hung out with those kids. And anyway, <laughs> We find out later that Bernie Lomax is actually planting stuff to stress her out so she'll perform for him on camera so he can write his, you know, his book and make his money. Uh, the mom finds out that he's doing this to her, to her daughter. Uh, anyway, all hell breaks loose. Jason shows up, starts killing everybody. Uh, Jason eventually kills her mom, right? After her mom confronts Dr. Cruz about making her daughter perform because instead of helping her he's stressing her out and trying to she thinks she the... thinks she's bringing her dad back uh when yeah she it's... jason back yeah yeah exactly in the beginning yeah she thinks so there's just it's kind of all over the place but it's it's interesting but um my question is how the hell did dr cruz okay so if he's the one who put the spike in the door right uh, from how did he know the vision she had of the exact <laughs> spike where the hell does that come into play right did she talk about it with her mom or something uh, I don't he overheard know. it. And like, how, how would he know that? Because he, I don't think she said anything until she saw the spike. Yeah. So how would he know that she had the? I don't know. Oh God, um, we're gonna get that comment. Well, actually, if you look at scene number seven, frame sixteen point five, you'll yeah. see that she actually had the hallucination and went to her mom and talked about the spike. But no. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> probably edited by the mpaa we missed it uh Not we don't yet, have the right three yet. hour long version of <laughs> new blood um, um jason so, and her first scene together man kicks ass on the like on the road uh yeah. with the electric wire and the puddle and everything and jason just imagine what's going through jason's you know pea brain as he's getting like pushed to the ground drowned in the puddle you know electrocuted uh that part where he gets electrocuted and gets back up and everything as a kid, mm -hmm. I thought, cause I used to love Godzilla, like King Kong versus Godzilla, the old black and white one loved it as a kid, bought it like at a uh, yard sale or something. One time watched it a million times. And I Jackpot. thought Godzilla and Jason were both powered by electricity because yeah. the way that fight happens. Uh, so as a kid, I thought that's, that's what brought him back again. I thought she killed him in the water and then uh, gave him more power with the electricity. But as an adult, I just think it's kind of cool to see him get his ass kicked, you know, and that, that had to like kind of not, maybe not freak him out, but I don't know, piss him off. What do you think? I think also oh, when he was electrocuted, I thought the opposite of you, because remember he was brought to life by electricity in the previous movie. Yes. So I was like, oh, this is like, kind of interesting like uh why is this one killing him but the other one brought him back to life i never thought of the recharged idea until you just brought it up yeah 30 years later um but i do remember when i saw that uh she was fighting back and she basically like, like threw his ass in the mud puddle electrocuted him later on she drops a house on him <laughs> she <laughs> drops the the roof basically on top of him um uh, that actually just did remember... fall on kane by the way I just yeah. wanted to point that out to everybody. Yes, it did. Yeah. Um, Kane Hodder is a badass, if we haven't already told you that in this episode before. Um, but when she finally fights back, I was I was jazzed about it. I was excited about it because it was it was nice to see Jason finally have a foil to have somebody that could stand up to him because he was such a like a great white. Nobody could stand up to him. And in all the previous movies, except for the final girl or maybe even Tommy Jarvis, it seemed like when someone even in this movie, the people that were killed, before, you know, are were killed way before earlier in this film. They're like they see Jason and they start like crawling backwards. They're like, no, yeah. no, they don't even attempt to fight at any yeah. point. So I just thought it was a breath of fresh air for somebody to be like, no motherfucker. You're like, I'm going to stand up to you. And not only am I going to stand up to you, I'm going to like, I'm going to kill you because I, this is what I have to do. Um, it's kind of a situation though. Like in Jason takes Manhattan is Tina, the actual villain of this movie though. 
Because had she not attempted to raise her father, there'd be no Jason to kill just, all these people. Just like in this Tommy movie. Jarvis bringing him back in part six, man. Yeah. So like, how know, culpable is Tina? She is very cold. She she's culpable in this uh, for sure. Uh, her and Tommy Jarvis totally are responsible for a lot of death. Um, I wanted to say, uh, I know we're going to talk about our favorite kills and stuff coming up, but I wanted to say there's one scene in this movie that stands out to me. It's not the electrocution. It's not when they're fighting in the house and she puts so much pressure on the mask that it snaps and we see the badass makeup. Um, Because that's been talked about a million times on the internet, on YouTube. My most iconic scene in this movie is when he jumps through the window when the uh, remaining survivors are standing around in the house. Yeah. And actually he almost knocked himself out doing it because it was supposed to be a bigger opening and he hit a support beam with his head, but yeah, yeah. he jumped too high because he was supposed to be crouched down when he jumped in, he had to like jump in crouched. Um, But no, just the scene of Jason jumping through that window and landing right in the middle of all these people terrifying badass iconic my favorite uh shot uh in the film um i was gonna say something so my favorite well let's just talk about it right now so let's get into the the meat and potatoes of the episode so we're gonna discuss jason let's talk about him in the film his look uh and his portrayal and you like the scene of him jumping you know jumping into the middle of the scene or whatever yeah my my thought when I think of Jason in this film, I think of him walking out of the water. You can see his exposed spine. Uh, You can see all the damage that he had taken from the previous six films. So one thing John Carl Beekler did, and he didn't, he didn't even have to tell anyone that was a fan of Jason. You could see it on screen. Any damage that Jason had taken in the previous six films was represented on his version of Jason. So you got the ax in the, uh, the hockey mask, you've got any like stabs, cuts, bullet wounds. If you look closely, it's all there. He's even got the chain on his neck right behind Josh from when he was chained in the water in Jason Lives by Tommy Jarvis. He's got all the stuff, okay? All the bells and whistles. So I love this Jason. Yes. I like Kane's portrayal of Jason. I don't just like it. I love it. I like the... I always do this like when I'm joking around at home or whatever, like where he moves his head and then the rest of his body moves or like kind of his breathing. Batman, but in reverse. <laughs> yeah. The breathing, uh, the heavy breathing, just the, how he emotes, uh, he acts through his eyes. He acts through his body. Uh, nobody else could have pulled off a 20 minute, 10, 15 minute interview with Arsenio Hall <laughs> in character where you don't even talk. Yeah. But Kane Hodder. So this version of jason is the epitome for me the look is the best look ever um do you agree with me or do you disagree i i agree um jason x pre uber is another favorite of mine um i thought it was weird that the part six jason the mask that tommy had uh, or no it's part eight uh part eight uh the mask that they find on the boat has the slit in it as if that person had seen jason and knew how to make it authentic (laughs) <laughs> yeah but no he's like, but part seven i love that they did that that uh, uh he uh kept all the damage from the movies even even the mask is damaged from the you know the the motor from the boat uh hitting hitting yeah. the mask in part six you know the mask is kind of uh tore up down here uh, in the video game not the nintendo one but the uh the more recent multiplayer one yeah they gave him like the worst stats. This is the best looking Jason in the series. And he was like the slowest moving, had the least amount of weapons and stuff. Um, but no, everything you said, I pretty much agree with. I can't add anything to it. I, I'm i not a huge fan of what he looked like under the mask. I thought they made him look too much non-human. You know, I know at this point he's a fucking zombie, mm-hmm. but there's not a lot of humanity left at all under there. Like, I don't know. It kind of, it's not as bad as Muppet Jason in part eight, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's just so, I don't know. know, They could have made him look a little more human. You know, you know who he looks like to me when the mask comes off, who 
there's like um there's like a line of bounty hunters in one of the Star Wars movies. I think they're looking for Han Solo. Like Jabba yeah, the Hunt okay. is yeah. He looks like one of the dinosaur, the dinosaur yes. bounty hunter that's on screen for about three seconds. He he looks like that one. Or he kind of looks like Karg from Masters of the Universe, the, the movie that came out in 87. He looks like one of the other guys that works for Skeletor who's on screen for about three seconds. And then that no, stays Karg. off too long. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's it could have been better. Um but it wasn't horrible. How about no, that? But it could no. have been better. Very, very um, scary to, uh, you know, eight, nine year old Josh. But yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was going to say real quick that, that this the guy in Jason Takes Manhattan probably knew when he had that mask and he was trying to scare his girlfriend on the boat. He probably knew where the slit in the mask was because Jason was actually in that newspaper clip clipping. Oh, yeah. Somebody took a picture of him. <laughs> yeah. Remember, there's a picture of him. So there you go, Josh. Uh, duh. Is is Jason Voorhees also like working for the Daily Bugle or something? You know, taking pictures of himself and going and making Jay money Jason. from it. <laughs> Jay Jonah Jameson. How does this guy get all these pictures of freaking Jason and Spider Man? <laughs> hey, I just created another character that I can impersonate. There you go. <laughs> I see it in lights. Spider Man with <laughs> Jason Voorhees. Daily Bugle. I'll get. I'll pay you scale, kid. I'll give you scale. <laughs> Spider Jason. Spider Jason, Spider Jason, Spider Jason. Uh, okay, so we discussed Jason. Let's get into our kills. Let's get into our favorite kills and our least favorite kills. Okay. What is your favorite kill and your least favorite kill of this film? The uh, party uh, noisemaker. Uh, okay. Kill was my favorite, just because. <laughs> Burr, or whatever. I can't remember. <laughs> It lets, it lets out that little toot. <laughs> um, who's the one that got killed in the building? He just stabs her through the wall or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Are you talking about the, the girl from She's All That who's in the yeah, horse yeah, stall? Yeah. She like gets killed through the door or whatever. Yeah, that's my the least. Arm, that's my the least. The arms favorite. come through the door, right? Yeah, yeah. That's my least favorite. My favorite is the party favor noise. <laughs> Kill. Okay. <laughs> Can we just play the the party favor noise? Uh, yeah, kill. Let's do that. Go, go to the clip <laughs> for that. Make it fast. Be right back. All right, Michael. Come on. Where are you, buddy? Huh? Michael? Where are you, buddy? Come on. Ben, are you coming back or not? Kill kind of reminds me. <laughs> they they actually did it though, but in my narration of Halloween Five, uh, like Chapter Eight, a cop gets killed by Michael Myers, uh, and he's like slamming Michael's head onto the the horn. Yeah, and as like a little, not really a blooper, but like a little funny thing to throw in at the end of the, because I, I added the sound effect of the horn being hit like four times to go with like yeah. him getting it's like honk honk honk, you know, and at the end I put. Uh, I was like, uh, cop kill, take two, different sound effect for chapter eight. Definitely real, definitely not a joke. And I started reading it, and Michael Myers grabbed the back of his head and slammed his head into the horn four times. And it was... <laughs> this is Eddie's death, alternate take, definitely completely serious, definitely not a joke. Here we go, take two, Eddie's death. 
Michael seized the back of Eddie's head and slammed his face repeatedly against the steering wheel, the car horn blaring every time it hit. Eddie clutched the radio microphone and started to sweat. Anyways. That little it, toot noise that we're joking around about so much, that's got to be like an inside joke or something they thought was funny. Because yeah. that's totally like light uh, humor in a, that's not, that's blatantly supposed to be funny, right? Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, that's Guilt, good. Guilty pleasure kill is when the doctor gets killed because I was just ready to see him go. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was pissed off at him, and it's like he's wearing his nice little seersucker suit out there in the woods, and he already used Tina's mom as a fucking human shield. When like he uses the mom as a shield, so she gets like gutted, yeah, uh, by whatever uh, D limmer or something. It's not it's not the weapon behind you. It was like a like a spear or something. Yeah. So she gets lifted up. She's murdered or Spike, right? Or what? I don't. Something goes through her. Okay? Yeah. I don't know what it is. He uses her as a human shield. Um, he was trying to like use Tina to, for his own financial gain. I mean, he was totally disregarding all the money he made in the Weekend at Bernie movies. He should have saved his money <laughs> from before. He's a dick. Uh, and he keeps telling yeah, Jason, was, no, no, no. It's like, I was happy. Yeah. I was happy. Yeah. He's like, please, I'll cut you in on the residuals from my book. Uh <laughs> He definitely was the one who I wanted to die, but the stoner guy couldn't care less about that character. It's like, could care less. Like, yeah. I took pleasure in his death almost. Um, and I didn't really like the sci-fi nerd either. He's a dick because uh, he was, like, making fun of Tina with the straight jacket. Yeah. So I'm glad he had a date with a soap on a rope. I'm glad he had to, uh, you know, sleep alone that night. And he's he's also an asshole because he was opening all the presidents presents for the birthday yeah. boy remember that yeah he reminds me of the teddy guy from part four you know yeah, he's watching an asshole. The... yeah he's a freaking asshole he does it just for opening those gifts and not knowing the guy's dead yet he's a dig uh, is that better... your favorite kill my no my favorite kill is easily uh je the, the girl the rich bitch uh she opens the door because she doesn't believe Nick and Tina that Jason's out there killing everybody. Walks yeah. right into an axe, right in her fucking face. That's a good one. And then, so he axes her in the face and then immediately throws her onto the like 1987 TV, you know, TV wooden job or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but the girl who was the stunt, uh, the stunt, the stunt woman for that scene, her whole body is limp. That's a real human being performing that stunt limp yeah. and it looks like he throws a dead body so everything about that scene is amazing and also if you remember slashaholics and josh where she opens the door and jason's about ready to kill her with the axe that's the the picture that's on the nes nightmare or nes friday the 13th game that's the picture that's like the famous picture for the game so if you guys have the nintendo game that's the scene right there okay. um my least favorite kill uh robin she's upstairs it was actually a reshoot uh they went back and filmed in the friday the or friday the 13th part four house uh they he jason like she's petting a cat and he throws her out the window yeah it's, yeah that one's kind of stupid weak. um yeah. and i'm sure if you guys are a fan of this movie or or jason if you're watching this you guys <laughs> know that the stunt woman wasn't really a woman when she's going out the window it's a man yeah, and you, with a red wig on yeah, yeah, and it it totally looks like a dude falling out of the sky. It's kind of like Ted uh, Savini's arms or whatever in part one. It's yeah. Like with all the hair yeah. on it. <laughs> it's got like hairy knuckles, uh, hairy ankles. But no, not one of their better kills. Uh, that ranks right up there with the kid from Dream Master being killed by an invisible Freddy in the dojo. Uh, pretty lame. Yeah. Um, Josh, does this movie hold up today? No, not really. Not 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 like some of the other ones. I'm how dare you. No, I still like it. I still watch it. It's still fun to watch, but it's very dated. They very they mm -hmm. really dated themselves, you know. It's so obvious 19, 1999. Like it's yeah, two thousand. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's wearing low rise acid watch jeans. Uh, no, it's it's good. The, the 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 battles between Tina and Jason, especially the final showdown. Uh, you know, in in the living room. Then when she when he falls to the stairs, 
the gas can, you know, coming up, shooting the gas at him. The fi- He's on fire for so long on screen. There's mm-hmm. just no top in that. So, you know, it is great. You know, I'm going to change my answer. Yeah, it does still kind of stand up. I think even modern horror fans could watch this and enjoy it as long as they know the camp that they're getting into ahead of time. Because mm-hmm. um, just the fire scene alone, that that final fight between them is so evenly matched for a while um, that you're almost not afraid of Jason for a minute. Uh, you know, you think he might yeah. actually, she could have just disemboweled him, I guess, you know, ripped his head and arms off. And <laughs> but, I think yeah. that my, I think it does hold up. Uh, there are obviously parts of this film that are extremely dated. Um, I really like that we got Kane Hodder as Jason. I like the battle. I like Jason finally has a foil. Uh, he's met his match uh, in equal, you know, power or whatever on screen. I like yes. that so, some of the kills are extremely inventive and great. Even the ones that are edited, like the axe to the head, I, I just talked about it, uh, still looks Speaking great on that. screen. Some some kills don't have to be extremely graphic to be uh, to work, yeah. if that makes any sense. They can be cutaways. Um, I have an imagination. I am a human being. I can <laughs> I can think. That's why books are popular, Josh, because people yeah. you don't have to show everything. Exactly. Um, yeah, I think John Carl Beekler did a good job. I think, uh, and this movie is one of my comfort movies. I tend to go back to it uh, more than any other one in the franchise, except for Jason Goes to Hell. Those are my two that I tend to watch the most. Um, I just like it. I have a lot of great memories of childhood. I have a lot of great memories of seeing it uh, in lights, you know, on the side of that video store. Uh, going to the going to the video store with my mom, my dad, and my brother, being able to like talk them into getting me some candy, maybe a soda or something, and rent a video game, and you know have a great weekend for like six dollars. Um, and I just remember seeing that poster and being mesmerized. And I wasn't even really a big horror fan, and I just really wanted to see it at that time because I was a little kid. Um, did Josh did so? Did this movie? What do you think, man? Do you think it did it take away or did it add? to the Friday the 13th franchise. No, I definitely added. Anytime I watched the Friday the 13th marathons, there was like a certain set of the movies that I always look forward to seeing. Um, and that was like parts, uh, I think it was uh, five, uh, four, five, six, and seven. Because mm-hmm. uh, this is before Jason Goes to Hell. And Jason, even, even after Jason Goes to Hell came out, they didn't show it on the marathons because it was two different companies still. Um, but yeah, you know, one, two, and three wasn't that excited for when they did when the marathon. I wasn't excited for part eight. Uh, four was okay, but five, six, and seven, you know, the five is the ooh, baby, and all that. Um, yeah, then falling down at the end on the spike. Six, Jason is Frankenstein, and seven, just the uh, the psychic battles with uh, with Carrie's uh, clone here, Tina. Um, yeah, I think it added to the series because it, it's almost like the series was heading for like, a, you know, a low and it, mm-hmm. it kept it above water and part eight, you know, it ran out of energy and went under. Yeah, they could have used Tina's psychic uh, energy for part eight as as which is weird because she was actually there was a there was a there was a world where they were going to continue her character in part eight and it just never came to fruition. And I swear to you, I would have rather seen a sequel to new blood uh, than Jason takes Manhattan to be honest with you. But uh, slashaholics, if you're really bored, there is a YouTube fan film where Tina comes, Lar Park Lincoln plays Tina again. And I believe uh, Bernie Lomax himself comes back and plays the doctor again and i think nick the care uh, the guy who plays nick actually comes back it's on youtube well wow. um yeah i don't i don't recall the name of the movie but uh it's how it's the doctor out there. survive <laughs> yeah i don't he's probably just like a an aberration or like okay. a like a phantom or like an a, aging a one <laughs> yeah but they they made a sequel, a fan film sequel. So I haven't watched the whole version of it, but maybe I'll check that out tonight because I'm kind of in a Jason mood now. Okay. Um, yeah. Eventually, we're gonna run out of slasher movies to review, and we'll start doing the fan films. 
Yeah, uh, Josh, I think you're underestimating uh, how many slasher movies there were, um, and there are. Um, did it add to the franchise? Yes. We got Kane Hodder as Jason. Yes. We got a different. We got a different uh, take. We got a different spin on the franchise that was fun. And I, Josh, if we were teenagers when this movie came out, I bet you we would have went to this movie and had a fucking blast. Oh yeah. Like on oh, a yeah. Friday night, this would have been a good time. I think this would have been a blast. Um, and it, and at the end of the day, they're not trying to win Oscars with these films. They're trying to take you away from, you know, your daily life, your day-to-day -day life, how some things are difficult and the world's tough sometimes and things don't go the way you always want them to. And if you could have a nice, fun escape, that's exactly what this movie provides. You just um, gave me the description for my next question for you. Um, okay. Because you would just be repeating yourself if you explained why. I guess there's no reason for me to even ask what you're going to give this movie as far as a score. Uh, yeah. Cause that's where we're at actually. Uh, so I know, so four sleeping bags, four being the best one being the worst. I'm going to give Friday the 13th part seven, the new blood. I am going to give this film four sleeping bags out of four. I love this movie. I adore this movie. It's okay. my it's if it's not Jason goes to hell it's it's new blood I know I'm in the minority but I don't care I love this film what do you what do you how many sleeping bags do you give it I'm gonna give it five uh, out of eight uh, broken hockey mask halves <laughs> so just picture his mask broken in two you know it would be yeah. four, it'd be four hockey mask total but since they're all broken in half it's gonna be let's see here one two. Three, four, two, two point two and a half hockey mask is what I'm saying, folks. Okay. Um out of four. Out of four. Um okay. I'm sorry, Alex. Um, I'm sure some of the ones I like you're not gonna like, but um it's not that I don't like it. It's just the characters and stuff are unforgiving. Like it was very late. They're so throwaway. Yeah, yeah, very throwaway. Um not enough plot, not enough story. And when the dad makes his return at the end. They didn't even have the guts. the The studio wouldn't let him. The MPAA wouldn't let him look gnarly, so he's just got mud mm -hmm. on him and stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't know, dude. There's just her mom dies. Her abusive, drunken dad comes back to save her or something, and all's forgiven. Like I don't, I don't know. This lazy writing, as far as the the other movies had at least interesting characters. Besides the doctor and Tina and her mom. There really wasn't, like you said earlier, they're all cookie cutter, uh, cannon fodder for Jason. Um, but yeah. the thing is, the reason it's getting 2.5 is the fire scene, uh, them having the balls to try something new, Kane fucking hotter. I mean, come on, Kane hotter yeah. is is yeah. worth you know four stars on his own. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, if if I gave it a higher score, it would just be for Kane. Uh, the look of Jason. The kills were pretty good. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to up it to three just because Kane fucking hotter. There you go. So let's keep talking. Let's keep talking. We'll get you to four. <laughs> uh, I was going to say one one last thing since you brought it up before we end the show. Uh, it was pretty sad that her mom was killed huh? Yeah. because she was truly like an innocent character. She was just trying to help her daughter and actually yeah. loved and cared for her daughter and unlike Friday the 13th part four, the final chapter where the mom just kind of goes missing, the Jarvis mom, <laughs> yeah. we actually see this mom slaughtered on screen. So they built up her character. There's a backstory. We like her. Uh, they kind of have uh, like a mythology behind her almost. And then they just yeah. murder her right in front of us. So, And the yeah, doctor makes dark. it happen. Not only yeah. that, but Tina, you know, it, I think it's after her fight with Jason or right before the first fight out on the road. Yeah. That's when she, no, it's, I think it's after her fight with Jason, her first one out on the road. She's you driving. Can see the psychic clash of yeah, her mom. See, yeah, she sees the vision. You know, mm -hmm. it's not enough that her mom died. Why did she have to see it happen? You know, I mean, yeah, she's had um, way too much loss in my opinion. I think they could have pulled back a little bit. Um, you know, maybe the doctor's holding the mom in front of him. Jason comes in for the kill. The mom dodges out of the way. 
doctor gets killed mom runs off survives somehow um it's kind of like it's kind of like the sheriff in uh part six what's his name i can't oh, remember um he's the one with the, the scope he's like wherever you point it you bang oh no that's the deputy i'm talking about the sheriff the dad who sees that oh Jason... yeah where he, his back gets folded up yeah it's just so it's sad just like i told like i told tom and i you know i told uh uh everybody i've talked to you cj graham you know uh, uh it's it's so sad that the dad is in hiding sees that jason's about to kill his daughter and then comes out hey 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 and he knows he's about to die uh you know there's enough of that in the series i think this they could have uh that's something they could have given us since they gave us so many shitty characters and plot points at least a little bit of a happy ending yeah um, it, so his name was uh sheriff garris i think right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. garrett garrett well, hey garris, yeah. josh she got a happy ending she got to ride off in the ambulance after everything her house was fucking destroyed all of her new friends are murdered <laughs> she got to ride off with a uh, low rent dollar store superman in the ambulance uh to god knows where because she doesn't have a house anymore she doesn't have a family anymore you want uh, me to knock she's my got score back down is that what you want to do she's got a perspective love interest <laughs> Scores he's fucking Superman. How come he wasn't fighting? Gosh, he's Superman. How come he wasn't fighting? <laughs> right? Jason must have had fucking kryptonite in his machete or his uh tree dilemmer back there. It's because me, yeah. I am Lex Luthor, and I stopped. <laughs> he stopped it. Josh, that's the end, buddy. That's the end of the episode, man. That's a wrap. That is a wrap on uh, uh the new blood. You know, yeah. it's kind of I don't know, we're gonna be like jumping back into freddy next or random jason movies i don't know but uh maybe michael myers maybe a zombie movie maybe chucky who knows i do love new nightmare, though yeah we'll do new we'll do new nightmare soon <laughs> but uh we're kind of freestyling right now happy yeah. new year flash Alex. yes hope you guys enjoyed this uh this this kind of out of nowhere dropped episode and uh josh you got anything for the channel news uh, I'm actually going to start narrating this book uh, very soon. The prologue's already available. Chapter one will be coming out soon. Um, lots of fun stuff coming up. Mark Patton mm -hmm. is on the horizon. Can't say the exact date yeah. yet. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click the like button. Drop us a comment. Hit us up at our email at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. If you want to support the channel, keep in mind we do not uh, have the ability to monetize the channel. So we depend on our Patreon and donations to keep it funded. Uh, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian. You can uh, use our PayPal donation email. It's in the description below to send us a donation anytime. We see them all and we appreciate them all. You, there's a cash app handle you can donate to. You can even get a cameo video from us. Uh, all the information for all of this is in the description all the time. Be excellent to each other, and always remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Um, say goodnight, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog.